Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. I am Tahsin Lokman and you are watching the Palestinian Diaries podcast. And today we're going to talk down to business about literally the business and financial world of Israel and Palestine. Um, and the most important person today with me is Prof. Dr. Nazari Ismail. He is the chairman for Boycott, Divestment and Sanction, also known as BDS, in Malaysia. Thank you so much, Prof, for coming. Thank you for having me. Okay, it's been a horrible October. Yep. Full of destruction and just plain murder and killings. Yes, uh, genocide, basically. Genocide, yes, yeah. correct. Yes. Ethnic cleansing and just removal of humans outright and indirect. <laughs> we are trying to exterminate the Palestinians. That's what they are trying to do. Force them out of Gaza. Yes, and the word used by the defense, Israeli defense minister, um, we want to eliminate all of them. And he even described them as animals, right? He did, he did. Okay, so let's go, let's step away from all the um, aggressive genocidal, gen genocide attacks. Let's talk about the whole process of boycott, divestment and sanction, which I think a lot of people still doesn't fully understand or comprehend what can we do and what should we do and what shouldn't we do. I mean, I know it's very direct, boycott, 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 but some people are still confused. Um, McDonald's, should we eat it in Malaysia or is it going to go to Israel or what's the whole situation? But benda macam tu, some people just don't understand. So, but first, let's just um, talk about BDS firstly. Like, could you just explain and introduce to us what exactly is BDS and what do they do on Malaysian home soil? Okay, thank you very much. Um, we notice now many governments, especially Western governments, okay. are allowing basically, not only are they are not doing anything, but they are allowing the genocide to take place yes. uh, in Palestine. Uh, many other governments, including in Muslim countries also, right? are also not doing much. In fact, some countries uh, continue to have diplomatic relations with Israel and some countries are exploring the possibility of normalizing relations with Israel. So, governments cannot be relied to, to protect the Palestinians from injustice in Palestine. So, what happened was the civil society in Palestine decided that they have to appeal to the people of conscience around the world to, to fight on their behalf. So that's what, that was what happened and they started a movement called Boycott, the Investment Sanction, BDS, 2005 it started. And later on it, it was uh, supported many other organizations in Palestine civil society organizations, they, they supported this move. So it's actually uh, very well supported by different sections of the Palestinian society, trade unions, etc. Yeah. Um, and later on, it spread to other countries too, America, Europe, and all of the rest of the world, including Malaysia, calling the uh, people of conscience around the world to help the cause of Palestine calling for boycott of uh, Israel, divestment meaning to take out their investments from Israel, and sanctions, as you know, sanctions mm -hmm. basically uh, in Malay is the katana. Um, un until Israel fulfilled three basic demands. Okay. So I will explain to you the three basic demands. In order to understand the three basic demands of uh, the Palestinians, you have to you simply need to know that the Palestinian society is divided into three uh, three groups, three main groups. Okay. Uh, number one is the Palestinian diaspora mm -hmm. outside, those are refugees, for example, in uh, many places, especially in Jordan, in Lebanon, in Syria. And then you have Palestinians who are living in historic Palestine, 
Okay. Now called Israel. Okay. And then you have Palestinians who are living in the occupied territories, uh, the West Bank, uh, East Jerusalem, as well as those who are in Gaza. Mm -hmm. So these three groups, these three groups will tell you, will help you understand the three demands. What are the demands of the uh, the BDS movement? Is that Israel is isolated unless number one they allow the Palestinians to go back to their homeland yes because they are refugees now and they are supposed to be allowed to go back to their homeland under under international law mm -hmm. because there was a resolution passed by the United Nations way back in 1948 resolution 194 that says that after the cessation of violence everybody is entitled to go back to their to their homes yeah so Palestinian refugees are supposed to be able to go back to their homes. But unfortunately, Israel has stopped them. Yeah. Uh, even though they are right under international law, no, they cannot go back to their homeland. So this one is the demand of the BDS movement. They are supposed to be able to go back to their homeland. All of them. You cannot say you, you don't come back here, you go somewhere else. You cannot say that. Okay. Number two is that Israel must uh, end the occupation of the West Bank and the blockade of Gaza. Both are illegal under international law. The West Bank, which they uh, conquered in 1967, uh, there was a war. Actually, they started it, but they say that they were attacked. But in reality, to study the history, they started the war again uh, after they got historic Palestine, Palestine 1948, they embarked on another war in 1967 and took control of the West Bank. Yeah. Now the international community said that that West Bank is no longer yours, that is supposed to be Palestine. Yeah. So you must end your occupation of the land and go back behind the, uh, the boundary, the green line they call it. And Israel refused to do that. From 1967 until now, they are occupying the West Bank and also uh, blockaded uh, Gaza since mm -hmm. 2006. Now, under international, international law, as I said just now, they are supposed to get out. But instead of getting out and ending the occupation, they are building more settlements. Yes. Bringing more Israelis over there, uh, building highways, infrastructure, etc., etc., to, to reinforce their position in the West Bank, basically they want to push the Palestinians out of the West Bank too. Yeah. So, that, so uh, the BDS demand is, they must end the occupation of the West Bank. And number three is that they must give full rights to the Palestinians who are living in historic Palestine, those who didn't leave yeah. Palestine when the war, uh, when, well, Israel there, was, no? when Israel was uh, set up in 1948. They are still. They they did. They, they didn't leave, and they have. They have stayed there until now. There are about two million of them. Uh -huh. But they do not actually have the same right as a as normal uh, Jewish citizen of Israel. Yeah. Uh, we can talk about that later. So, so they must be given full rights, just as other uh, citizens in so-called Israel. Okay. So these are the three demands of the BDS movement, uh, and they are all along. International law. Huh? Okay. For example, no discrimination against uh, Palestinians. Uh, you could, you shouldn't give priority to uh, Jewish citizens of Israel, but not to Palestinians. Yeah. You must end the occupation of the West Bank and the blockade of Gaza. And number three is right of return for the Palestinian refugees. All of them are recognized under international law. I think, uh, Prof. A lot of people don't understand when we talk about international law, they are breaching the international law, it's against the international law. So many people talk about it. It's they are basically criminals, okay? In my head, kalau you are against the law, you are a criminal. But why do they continue doing it? Yes, they have support from all the big countries, but macam I don't know, international police or inter I don't know, UN, whoever, why are they just doing it? And nobody is, I mean, people are calling them out, but nobody is 
arresting them nobody is stopping them nobody is yes they control i i don't know like what 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 how what how that's the question <laughs> Okay, how come they can continue to do things even though they are flouting international law? Yes. I want to also uh, uh, maybe uh, highlight to you the very the very basis of, of the existence of Israel. Israelis. Okay. It's actually against international law. Ah, huh. there. It's okay. against international law. Uh, but then, you see... Uh, Well, if you go back to history, yes. when Britain colonized that Britain. part of the world, yes, that is against international law. But yes, you are from all the way from Britain. You come and govern. And the that happened country. to Malaysia as well. Well, so that is also against international law. So when we talk about international law, we are talking about what they have promulgated. So yeah. we we can talk about that, but it doesn't doesn't mean that it's the truth of things, now, Basically, yes. right? Yes. Okay, for example, when when Israel was established in 1948, look back the at history they uh, the zionists who came to palestine they committed murder as- killings murder killings uh, they they confiscate land they force palestinian, palestinian refugees uh, uh, palestinian to leave their home and become yeah. refugees basically according to historians they committed ethnic cleansing according yes. to israeli historian uh, yeah. one of them is very famous professor ilan papi that's why he say ethnic cleansing took place um by foreigners Foreign yeah. from uh, foreigners from Europe, so they, they were committing crimes, but then the international community, controlled by the West, yeah. basically, right, they decided to recognize Israel. And yeah. The first country that recognized Israel was America in 1948. Yes, they they basically controlled the United Nations because they are the most powerful country. Yeah. So they. Right, yeah, so powerful. Country, so powerful. <laughs> so they decided. Okay, we want to recognize when Israel, when America recognized Israel. Other countries decided if they want to be in the good books of America, yeah. they better follow uh, the step. But the like step. after, I think after the uh, what do you call that? Um, the Cuban missile it was crisis. It? No, ah, yeah. yeah, after the Cuban missile crisis. I mean, there was. The, Uh, there was a Soviet Union and there was a US and that was like the balance of power was between two two powers right and now we are having a uni, uni unilateral power is unipolar, it, uni, it unipolar, unipolar yes yeah. unipolar power and that is the US but now with the emergence of I don't know Ch- China and Russia well China <laughs> recognizes Israel as a state okay that is already wrong in the first place yes Russia also recognizes Israel as a state that's also Alhamdulillah, Malaysia does not recognize. Yes. Right? We hope that will remain so. Okay. okay. So let's come back. Um, now, Russia has got a strong relation with Israel. Okay. There are many uh, Russian Jews. Okay. Uh, and uh, many rich Russians settle in Israel and they go back and forth. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, they have diplomatic relations with, and they want to nurture that. Uh, uh, China also has got. Mm-hmm. Until, Until now, has got good good business relationship with Israel. Israel uh, leaders visit China, and, they, and China is interested to to explore investments in the area and to get and to have uh, technology collaboration with Israeli firms. Yeah. So actually, and all this because like are, we've, the media have been portraying like Putin in support of um, have been showing some sort of solidarity with Palestine. Is this all just Western? As long as uh, it helps, it is in their interest. Yeah. So yeah. it's not based on principle; it's based on uh, a country's interest. Okay. So in their, they think that it is not in their interest to to go for an all-out uh, what um, war or uh, com- completely discontinue relationship with Israel. Is Russia think that it is not in their interest because okay. they have, as I said just now. There are many Russians who are, uh, who are in Israelis. Yeah, they have the dual citizenship. Okay, uh, and they have investment there. So it, uh, Putin also wants the support of Russian Jews. Uh-huh, uh huh. Russian yes. Jews are very sympathetic to Israel. Okay. Uh, so businessmen in China they want to invest in China, uh, in Israel. Okay, uh. So if you are talking about the 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 world, even though there are blocks, there are what different. Uh, you have America, you have BRICS, etc., etc. Yes. But, but they 
as far as Israel is concerned, they don't continue, they don't consider Israel to be their enemy. Okay. They don't consider that Israel okay. has got relationship with all these countries. Yes. Uh, so you do can you cannot expect them. Okay. You cannot expect them to help the Palestinians. Okay. The Palestinians are actually on their own. Yes. Actually, uh, for a long time already. Yes. Uh, they their their country was stolen. And the international community actually uh, didn't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, and then the many decided to go along and invest in is, uh, Israel, and they have got diplomatic relations. All our neighbors, except for Indonesia, yeah. Thailand has got a diplomatic relation with Israel. Singapore has got very strong the, relations. The with Prime Israel. Minister and the President even wrote letters to the yeah. embassy yeah. openly and yep. <laughs> expressed. Yep. So <laughs> I'm saying actually, um, the Palestinians are on their own. Okay. Even uh, Turkey. Yeah. Which is one of the strong supporters of Palestine. Turkey has uh, has got relationship with Israel. Okay. They have uh, diplomatic relations, and re- in recent months, Turkey was actually exploring uh, the possibility of enhancing their relation with Israel. Okay. Uh, well, trade relations, especially, and also exploration of oil. Okay. This is Erdogan. Eh? Yes. I don't know, Erdogan or Erdogan. Uh, <laughs> he actually, yes. he actually was planning a visit uh, to, to visit Netanyahu to to shake hands and discuss with Netanyahu. What? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Kita. Before we go further into all these countries that we assume are. Like Turkey, we see them as such a Islamic state. You know, you know, you know what I mean. The image, like, okay, I checked out this website, tradingeconomics dot com. Okay, tradingeconomics dot com shows. I search Israel Malaysia, and it says here, Israel imports from Malaysia. Israel imports from Malaysia was ten point sixty nine million USD in twenty twenty two, according to the United Nations Comtrade database. On international trade, and it states here Israel imports from Malaysia, data, historical charts, statistics, and this was last updated October twenty three, twenty twenty three, this month, like literally this month, where the, when the attack started, and like among the top valued items, it says here year twenty twenty two, animal, vegetable fats, and oils, cleavage products, organic chemicals, it's like nine point. Seven three million the value <laughs> like yeah. this is import from Malaysia, and this is um, Israel exports to Malaysia in twenty twenty two. It was seventy four point four one million USD, according also to United Nations Comtrade database. We don't have official diplomatic relations with Israel. On our passport, it states that we're not allowed to go to Israel. But why do we have trade relations with Israel? Okay, so if you ask the Malaysian government official, they say we don't have any. Okay. Uh, but that statistics come from Israeli website. I think. Okay. Uh, and trading economy has probably get it got it from Israeli websites. Okay. Uh, so under Malaysia is is actually other countries. Other Now, countries. Oh, I did ask uh, YB Wong Chen about this. Okay. I say, well, how come we are still having trading relationship based on the, the, the data that we can get from from the website? Uh, he said that he he said he's not aware of it. Okay. And then uh, he is going to uh, ask the ministry, re- relevant ministry, to investigate. Maybe the value chain somewhere around along the line. Maybe it comes from another country. But because I know a case where we our activists we found jeans okay. sold in giant supermarket. Okay. Uh, with Hebrew uh, letters. So, oh yeah, I remember yeah. this incident. Yeah. I remember. So we found out it's actually the company uh-huh. is an Isra- Israeli company. But when we ask uh, Giant, how come you are stocking and selling Israeli jeans? Okay. And he told us that product is actually imported from China. Okay. So the manufacturer is actually China. The brand is Israeli. Okay. But if you look at the code, it's actually seven to nine. Uh huh. So Israeli. Yes. So I do not know exactly the truth behind it, but of course the giant decided not to t- sell the jeans anymore, no more. Okay. But where actually the uh, the, the, the jeans source. come from? Probably he said actually we import from China. They don't they don't check they they buy from China from some yeah some business. Barang tu sampai and jual. Sampai lah. 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 Sampai
uh, but apparently that is probably categorized as Israeli goods okay. because of the code. Yeah. So maybe that's the reason that was reported, reported back to China uh, to Israel yeah. to be their export to China, export to China. through export to Malaysia through China. Through China. Export to Malaysia through China. Possible. Also from Singapore, maybe. Yeah. We have a lot of trade relationship with Singapore. Singapore trades a lot with uh, Israel. Israel yeah. uh, so, how do you categorize that? Uh, shipping, for example, right? Okay. Uh, we found out there is a uh, there is a company from Israel called Zim Shipping. That is Israeli company. So I asked somebody who knows about shipping business. Uh, I say, what? How come Malaysia allows uh, Israeli shipping company to come and and what? And uh, drop their goods or unload in Port Klang. Uh-huh. He said no. When when they approach Malaysian waters, they will change their flag. Wow. From Israeli flag to another country's flag. Which okay. They can and under under shipping laws, they can do that. They oh. can change the and they are registered. For example, in Panama, then they will choose Panama flag. Uh-huh. So the, the Zim shipping, the the ship is owned by. Uh, Israeli Israel. company, uh-uh. but the flag is Panama, for example. So but when when Panama uh, flag, uh-uh. the ship will be allowed by Malaysian authorities to to go to or to unload. So to basically, memang Papua. orang memang Israel have been entering the country anyways, lah. Uh, if you're talking about people coming over here, they can easily come because yeah, they, using they dual have passport, dual passport. Right? Uh-huh, yeah, they can use American passport. No yeah. problem with that at all. Yeah. That one is very easy for them. Okay, uh, but I'm talking about shipping, huh? uh-uh. uh, So I suspect that's the case. Okay, uh, there is a possibility that there are goods that come direct. Okay, that's possible. We do not know. We have to do some investigation. Okay, uh, because uh, there may be flights over from over there that comes, and but maybe our authorities decide not to do anything. About, I, I have no idea. I've, okay, we have to investigate. I'm just saying possibility. I don't okay. Want, I don't want to be accused of yeah. saying that the customs is not doing their job. Right? This is right. allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, yeah. We but would know. you push? Would BDS push this for the government to investigate for the? I did. I said. I, I mentioned to uh, the uh, YB Wan Chen, and uh-huh. he said that he's going to investigate further. Okay. Uh, probably we need to follow up with him to find out what is the situation, whether it's true uh-huh. that there are some goods that come direct. If they come direct, then we can we we. As against Malaysian law and Malaysian policy, anyway. But if they come through Singapore or some other countries, then that's not not easy for us to do anything about it because it comes from Singapore, you see. Yes. Uh, unless you can you can make a law, or really strict law that says that any product with the code seven two nine originally cannot enter the country. Cannot, yeah. can, you have to make a special. But law. but I'm looking at the statistics. They bought uh they bought a graphic here, and it says here 2013, 2014, and 2015. Is among the highest, you know, uh, export one two zero million to one six zero million. You see, um, our society okay. prioritize economic growth. Okay. We have to, we have to uh, admit that, right? Yes. Everybody thinks about their the jobs, put money in their pocket, basically. Right? Yes. That's the priority. So. If the economy goes down, the government get into trouble. Yes. If uh, let us say uh, a computer company that imports chips from Over, Israel, from Israel, are not allowed to do that, they will say they move to another country. Yes. So there are, these are major employers, yes. big investments with thousands of employees. So you can understand the Malaysian government uh, will be very reluctant Mm-mm. because ultimately. People will question them about jobs. Malaysians are more concerned about jobs, even though they may be very passionate now about Palestine yes. issues. But when it affects their job, they may bread and butter. Yeah, yeah. For example, now about boycotts of uh, some companies, <coughs> some McDonald's. Uh-huh. Many McDonald's uh, employees get very upset. Uh-uh. They, they say, yeah. Since we're talking about McDonald's, can yeah. we understand? Like, okay, McDonald's have released a statement. Yeah, they are donating and. That's Malaysia. That's McDonald Malaysia. Ah, uh, yelah, macam McDonald Malaysia tu. Does it go to Israel? Yeah, okay, like let me explain. Okay, yes. Uh, the BDS strategy. Yeah? Okay. BDS strategy is to uh, focus our boycott efforts only on limited number of firms. Okay. Uh, some other organisations, uh, some NGOs may may have a long list of companies associated from Israel. Okay. But 
BDS say no, that is not effective. Our strategy is to put pressure on companies that are complicit with Israel, uh, calling people to boycott them, to put pressure on them, so that they will not continue with the with their complicity. Okay. No. We, uh, the BDS movement say that if you have a long list, it's not effective. We want to be effective. Uh -huh. If you have 100 in the list, people will forget after a while. Yes. They may, during their passionate moments, they will study, right? After a while, they just, it's too difficult. Huh? Yeah. They just ignore when they go to shopping, they, they will not study, you know. Uh -uh. They will check, 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 check the barcode. Semua. And they will it may be now, but later on you find out, biasanya, normally they will just ignore after a while. Okay. So we want to make sure that people remember. So uh -huh. we select only a few firms. Uh, some people say, if you want to boycott, you boycott everything. No, no, that's not the issue. We want to focus uh, so that it becomes effective now. It's a strategy. Uh, it's, not okay. a, it's not a principle as such. It's a, a strategy, a tactic. As an analogy, when America fought the war against the Japanese during World War II, yeah. there were many cities or towns that they could have bombed. Uh -huh. But they only bombed how many cities? Two cities. Only two cities. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Nagasaki. If you what kind of if you say to the Americans, if somebody say to the Americans, you are not being consistent. Uh -huh. Since Japanese are very bad people, why are you all, why are you bombing only two? Uh -huh. You should bomb the whole country. The whole country. <laughs> uh, uh, what? Then the American will say to you, you are stupid, right? Because we have a limited resources. Yes. We only bomb certain strategic cities. Uh -huh. Similarly with BDS. our BDS. Okay. We have limited resources. If you start saying, oh, boycott 1,000 firms, yeah. everybody will be confused and cannot remember and then etc. So we focus on certain strategic companies which for, and then there are criteria. Okay. Number one, they must be high profile. People know about these companies. Okay. Right. Uh, so we talk about Puma. Puma is a very well-known brand. Yes. And then the other thing is we want, when we choose this company, we want at the same time to be able to explain to people about the issue in Palestine. Okay. Example, in the case of Puma, people ask, why do you back, back up Puma? We then explain to them, Puma is a sponsor of the Israeli Football Association. Oh, okay. okay. They are the main sponsor of uh, yeah, apparel. Eh? Mm -mm. Then, they, then they were so. What is so special about Israeli fo uh, football association? That's not the end of the story. We say, you do you know that uh, the Israeli football association has got clubs at their members, clubs, okay. branches. You can see like clubs like uh. like in Malaysia we have football association in Malaysia. Yeah, they yeah. have Kantan, Tenganu, Johor, whatever. Uh. So they also have the same kind of structure. Okay. But among those clubs, they are some of them are located in the West Bank. Okay. Now West Bank, and then people, are, what is this West Bank? Uh, so uh -huh. some people don't know. Okay. Then we can explain to you. Do you know that West Bank is as under international law, uh -huh. uh, so-called international law? Uh -huh. West Bank is supposed to be Palestine. Okay. And Israel is not supposed to be there. They should have withdrawn from uh, West, Bank. West Bank in 1967. Yes. After the war ended, they should have withdrawn. But they still maintain the occupation. Not only that, they have set up cities. Yes. Basically, settlements. Huh? The word settlement is actually uh, sounds very like a small uh -uh. kampong. Uh -uh. Actually, there are towns uh -uh. Uh, with infrastructure, etc. Yeah. And even football clubs. Okay. So, they, they, in other words, they recognize this like a part of their Israeli Football Association. That is against the FIFA law. Ah, okay. FIFA goes according to international law. Okay, so For example, Chonto FIFA was uh, going to take action against Russia. I don't know why. Yes, yes. So this, FIFA should have done the same thing to Israel because Israel Football Association has flouted international law. They are yes. not supposed to be located in the West Bank. So we then explain. So what happened? Now people then realize, oh, there is such thing called West Bank, and then they are not supposed to be there. They're supposed to be the future state of Palestine under the Oslo Accord, for example. Yeah. Under the Oslo Accord, Israel is supposed to withdraw all their presence eh, in, West, in the West from Bank. From West Bank, uh -uh. out of West Bank, and the occupation. But that instead, they're the having like communities yeah, and football teams. Yeah. Football teams, etc., etc. So that's why we say, 
Uh, and and who is the sponsor of the Israeli Football Association? Puma. Puma. So Puma, in a way, is complicit because yes. you know that Israel has got all these uh, football clubs in the West Bank, and yes. you still continue to sponsor uh, Puma. Uh, is, sorry, Israeli Football Association. You are complicit. The Israeli football teams has always started being in the champions. I don't know. I don't know if they have been there the whole time, but like they have like. Macha, macha Actually, this, issue, this issue was raised during the FIFA meeting. Yes, I remember this happening. Uh, you know what? I, uh, and our current agong, uh-huh. Sultan Abdullah. Yes, Sultan Abdullah. Of Pahang. Yes. He is actually our representative in FIFA. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's very active for... Yeah. Dengan dulu Through, chairman uh, yeah, for him, right? Yeah, he's actually permanent, like a permanent representative okay. of Malaysia at the, at the FIFA. FIFA, okay. Because FIFA is, is not based on... It's based on personality. Oh, okay. Uh, so, okay. He, he is there uh, representing Malaysia. Okay. Now, I spoke to his officer. Mm-hmm. He raised it during the FIFA meeting. Okay. And the FIFA was going to discuss this. Okay. They were going to... If they discuss this, the their conclusion would have been... Israeli Football Association is has illegal. flouted international law, right? Yeah. Uh, flouted FIFA rules because of because you, because of their presence, they they would have been kicked out. But okay. what happened was Be- Benjamin Netanyahu <laughs> called the FIFA chairman mm-hmm. and asked for the meeting to be postponed. So the meeting to discuss the issue was postponed until today. So this is through I don't know, no political cloud financial club whatever so that's why we have to appeal to the people of conscience around the world okay you want to if you want to make sure that Israel respect international law uh-huh. this is how you can help okay. you boycott Puma yeah uh, because of this uh, if until Puma stops their complicity and their sponsorship of Israeli Football Association so if we do that and Puma suffers uh-huh. then other sports companies will be very careful. Yeah. Other companies will also be very careful about their involvement with Israel. So that's why we, we are hoping that many more firms are scared yeah. uh, of being involved with Israel. And once everybody gets scared, yeah, inshallah, uh, then Israel will be uh, in trouble. Yeah. The, uh, as was the case in the, uh, of South African government last time. Uh, okay. so we, we didn't talk about that just now. Okay. I want to explain that. Why are we so? Uh, why do we believe that boycott is actually a very powerful weapon? Because that was one of the main factors that contributed to the fall oh, of the apartheid, the apartheid regime uh, yeah. in South Africa last time. Okay. Uh, similarly, as what is happening in Palestine last time in South Africa, the blacks were uh, suffering. Yes. They were discriminated. They couldn't get uh, their rights. Right. Uh, they couldn't go to proper school. Yes. They were even only uh, allowed to stay in certain we call it bantu stands eh? uh, like uh, areas, areas only for the blacks yeah so even though they were the majority and the international community allowed that to happen yeah. for many many decades yeah until activists started talking about it and calling the international community to boycott south africa actually people when i do people uh-uh. were calling on companies why you are you are, should be ashamed of yourself why you get why are you involved? Why are you investing? Uh-huh. Why did you invest in South, in South Africa? So when people start talking about it, politicians also decided that, okay, this is wrong, this is uh-huh. wrong. And then companies also decided this is wrong because they were very, very embarrassed. They were also under boycott targets also. Yeah. And so they changed. So they decided to withdraw from South Africa. Yeah. And South Africa was not allowed to join uh, sports competitions. Uh, if, if you recall, uh, South Africa is very good in rugby, but now mm-hmm. you know that. But yeah. they were not allowed to join rugby World Cup. They were not jo- allowed to join the uh, soccer World Cup. Even Olympics, they were not allowed to participate. And in the end, they decided <laughs> they cannot continue yeah. because the whole world was isolating them. Yeah. And and that was the end of the apartheid regime, 1994. So boycott really. Works. Worked in order to force uh, what uh, apartheid regimes, uh, which is what is happening in Palestine. Yeah, it worked in the case of South Africa, and if we are united with this effort of boycotting uh, Palestine, we will be as successful as we were in the case of South Africa. Okay, like um, besides Puma, what are the major brands that we should? Okay, so Starbucks? as I said, we focus on a few. <laughs> okay, uh, so that people remember. 
and also we don't want people to be uh, to find it difficult to participate. Uh-huh, That's yes. why we are selective. We found if it is it is easy to implement, easy okay. for people to support. Uh, HP, okay, because HP they they used to supply equipment to the Israeli army. Okay, okay. Uh, to the Israeli military to maintain checkpoints, to Israeli navy, uh, etc. So. And we know what they were doing to Palestine. They are doing to Palestinians. Now they are still um, through their uh, so affiliate companies. Mm-hmm. They, they are maintaining uh, IT system for the Israeli government. Mm-hmm. And we say boycott HP until they completely get out of Israel. And easy for people to participate because there are many alternatives yes. to HP, right? Uh, similarly, Puma. There yeah. are many alternatives to Puma. Many alternative to HP, uh, so there's another one. Now people ask me, what about Nestle? Ah, yeah? uh-uh, yes. Uh, Nestle, because Nestle has got big investment. Yes. Actually, there are many companies that are complicit. Ah, uh-uh. many complicit meaning meaning they have got relationship with Israel. They yeah. have got business there. But as I say, we focus on a few, and those one of the criteria is that you can easily participate. Okay. In the case of Nestle, the problem in Malaysia is if you ask people to boycott Nestle. Yeah. Then they cannot drink Milo. Cafe, they cannot drink Milo. They yeah. cannot eat Maggi, right? Uh, there are many products now in in the market that are associated or produced by Nestle. Yeah. So it's a difficult target. You go hospitals. Yeah. Actually, the, their patients they they are served with Milo. Yeah. Right. But the schools. So if you ask, they sponsor so many uh, programs, sports programs. Yeah. Uh, I think Malaysian sports bodies also get money from Nestle. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a difficult target. Uh uh-huh, Yes. It's a valid target. Yes. But the problem is difficult. So we 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 are tactical. Yeah. Meaning we when we call people to boycott, we want to make sure that everybody is able to participate. Everybody easily. is able to participate easily. It's not okay. difficult for you to to participate. Uh, so that's the reason why we do not put Nestle in the list yet. Okay. Maybe in the future. Okay. And then we have other companies like um, uh, Caterpillar. Caterpillar, okay. Uh, Caterpillar. That's okay. actually not so easy. Yeah? yeah. There are alternatives to Caterpillar. For example, you have Komatsu, you have Hitachi, etc. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Caterpillar, why is it in the first place? Why is it complicit? Because they provide the heavy machines, the bulldozers, to the Israeli army. Oh, okay. These are huge machines yeah. that can. That can destroy a houses. village. Uh, houses is simple. What they okay. can do. they can flatten whole village. Much, much like Sheikh Jarrah, when the incident, so ah, all yeah. the bulldozing. Easy. A few minutes only, they can flatten everything, right? Okay. Because they are like three stories tall, you know, oh, very hard, okay. very big machines, and they are supply. They are bomb proof. They are bulletproof. Wow. Uh, so this is the favorite equipment used by the Israeli military. Okay. Okay. So they are. Ve- I have videos of uh, of bulldozers. Caterpillar bulldozers being used by military uh, by Israeli military. The problem is that it's, it's actually uh, the it's quite a tough target in Malaysia because Caterpillar is distributed by Sam Dabi. Okay. Sam Dabi in Malaysia, they is actually a major income earner for Sam Dabi Group, and Sam Dabi is actually owned by PNB. Mm-hmm. So PNB is actually owned by many Malays, huh? Mm-hmm. Ultra. Yeah. And so Saim Dabi is reluctant to drop. I, I met, to be honest, I, I will tell you, I will share with you that I met the chairman of uh, Saim Dabi okay. group. Now he's ex chairman lah, mm-hmm. previous chairman. Okay. I explained to him. I showed him the videos. I showed him to his officer. Okay. The video. So I think his officers and they just spoke to him, and then he he called me to have a discussion. So you know, he saw the videos and he knew the complicity. But he said, "You see, he said, I have this is a government-owned company, mm-hmm. and I have I have to make sure that it performs. the The party that is supposed to to come up with policies of this nature is the government. If the government tells me to drop caterpillar, I will drop it immediately. Okay, but I cannot make a decision like that because." I understand because he wants to make money yeah. for Sam Dabi and Sam Dabi want to make money for PNB. Yeah. Uh, that's the problem. It's quite tough because if the Sam Dabi profit goes down, PNB people, a uh, PNB will suffer and all these Amanah Saham yeah. holders will get upset. So yes. we have to explain. So that's where 
we have to talk to the people. Okay. Caterpillar is actually complicit, and you should tell uh, contractors don't buy uh-huh. caterpillar machines. Uh, all these uh, construction companies, if possible, don't. That's the way to go from the bottom. From, from the bottom. The, bottom uh. the top is taking about making money only. Uh-huh. Uh, the bottom, you tell, but not easy. People want to make money. They, yeah. Number one is money. Yeah. So that is our challenge. Right? When we talk about boycott, people say it's going to affect our economy. So we tell them if you are talking about economy, making money, then there's no, there's no, there's no, no point talking about fighting injustice. Yeah. Because fighting injustice would involve some kind of sacrifice. Yeah. The Palestinians have shown to us that they are willing to sacrifice their lives. Yeah. And their what, whatever they have in order to to fight against injustice. Yeah. They can easily leave Palestine. Yeah. Make a living somewhere. Right, but they refuse, right? But they they refuse, stay. No, even though they get killed, but yeah. say, okay, the principle is that they are doing wrong, uh, injustice to us, and we are not going to just allow them to take over and to take our win con- our country and win. So we will fight, even though if we may, we may have we may lose our lives. Uh-uh. So that is the spirit. Yeah. Uh, so we hope the Malaysians. It's nothing much. We are not asking Malaysians to lose their life. <laughs> yeah, their lives. yeah, exactly. You are just asking them to support boycott efforts. Uh, some yeah. people may suffer some economic consequences, yeah. but they can always find another job in another company. Yeah. Uh, if you don't buy, uh, if you don't go to McDonald's, then you yeah. can go to another restaurant that will benefit from people not going to McDonald's. Yeah. yeah. So coming back, you ask me about McDonald's. Why? Uh-huh. Yeah, I didn't answer the question. Yes. Why? It used not to be in the list, huh? Because we it's not directly complicit. Okay. It exactly. wasn't directly complicit. Okay. We couldn't find the what the justification. Okay. Like bulldozer just now, caterpillar directly complicit. In the case of McDonald, they have got uh, they have got branches in uh-huh. Israel, but many companies have got branches in Israel. Uh huh. So what's so special with McDonald then? So it's not nothing. Uh, the benefit from talking about boycott McDonald is very minimal. Until what happened recently. Okay. Until what happened recently. Okay. When the McDonald Israel, McDonald Israel uh-uh. decided to give thousands of free meals to the Israeli military yes. for them to, while they are killing Palestinians. Yes. So that is actually directly complicit. Okay. Okay. That is. Feeding Madonna, the <laughs> feeding the killers. Yeah, feeding the killers. Yeah. Uh, so that is that is actually direct complicity. Uh. But the thing is, it's actually McDonald Israel. Well, McDonald International, uh-huh. McDonald Corporation in the US allowed this. They didn't criticize. Yes. They didn't say to McDonald Israel to stop Don't doing do that. Uh-huh. They didn't. They actually, in fact, I I saw a video. They even changed the wrappers into yes. the Israeli flags. Uh, that's American. Uh-huh. Ma- the American at Chicago. In, yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. So that shows that they, for them, it's no big deal. In fact, as I said, probably supportive also. Okay. So that's why BDS movement decided that McDonald should be should be and and because they allow one of their uh, what franchisee. Yeah. Uh, they don't. They didn't say anything about. They didn't condemn it. Yes. So you are terpalit as Malaysia. What, eh? If kalau macam tu, what happens to the McDonald franchises in Malaysia? So they they have to tell. Uh huh. They have to tell McDonald US. They can co- easily communicate. Okay, so McDonald's Malaysia ni should, should communicate communicate to US uh, and one, say condemn if, if Israel. If you want to reduce people's anger, number yeah. one, you come up with a statement yourself, lah. Uh-uh. That's what we 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 advise. Okay. McDonald's Malaysia, come up with a statement that says that we condemn what McDonald Israel, Israel but okay. And we we condemn what Israel is doing. We condemn uh-uh. we condemn that. Then that will probably. Uh, Soften the blow. Soften, <laughs> soften the pain. Okay. Right. Then we can uh, we can tell Malaysia. Okay, they are they are actually uh, uh, not complicit. But McDonald Malaysia until now didn't make any statement. Okay. Well, con- they didn't even condemn Israel. Uh, Israel killing of Palestinians is not condemn. Uh, they should do that plus condemn uh, McDonald Israel. Uh-huh. And also write a letter set, and give us a copy that they write a let they wrote a letter that say uh, uh-huh. to McDonald. Uh, America, the headquarters, uh-uh. to to ask them to to go uh, to to condemn lah, condemn to condemn. Uh-uh. Uh, but they are not doing that. So because of that, McDonald uh, remain on the list. Uh. We okay. have to add them in the list of companies which are complicit. Okay. And also Burger King also now. Okay. Burger King is also uh, Burger King US yeah. supporting Israel as well. Yeah. 
so they also deserve to be in the list. So now the list has expanded a bit, lah. Yeah. <laughs> because of that, even though we want to prefer a bit focus on a few so that yeah. people remember, but now because of circumstances, we have to expand the list a bit. Okay. But we still maintain that it should be focused rather than a whole list of hundreds, hundreds of, of. That's not. That's not. So much like Puma, HP, HP, Caterpillar, McDonald's. Uh, we uh, that's another another one is Ahava Cosmetics. Ahava. Because that Ahava Cosmetics is very popular in the US. Okay. Uh, because the 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 ingredients are actually from from the West Bank. Oh, okay. The, around the Dead Sea area. Uh, so okay. uh, so they establish their business there. They're not they're not they're an Israeli company. Yeah. They shouldn't be there in West Bank. Yeah. So they 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 get the ingredient from there, operation from there, production operation is there, and then they export to different parts of the world. They are to participate. Very popular in America apparently. So okay. uh, Ahava Cosmetics. Imported here, you can buy through. I'm not. I don't want to advertise it from by from where. <laughs> Just saying that this is a. Are they available in Malaysia? Other, lah. Okay, Malaysia can buy. Okay. So, so make sure that you don't buy uh, our cosmetics. Another one is um, G4S. G4S. Uh, yes, that is a security company. If you look oh. at the. Oh uh, yeah 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 G4S. I thought it was gas. <laughs> G4S. <laughs> okay. G4S is actually a security company. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's Israeli. No, no, that's actually British company. Oh, British. Okay. Uh, but. They have a strong presence in Israel. They actually maintain the jails, the prisons. Wow! Of Palestinians, Palestinians are, are incarcerated, incarcerated for. They are the contractors for the Israeli prison service. Oh my God! They actually provide many uh, equipments to Israeli military as well. Uh, when uh, Masjid Al-Aqsa was, they wanted to they wanted to control Masjid Al-Aqsa's people's access to Masjid Al-Aqsa. They, Last time, like like you want to go to the airport, kan? You have yeah. you have a uh, scanning equipment. Yes. Israel wanted to do to have that around the masjid, but Palestinians protested, uh-uh. and that's why they abandoned the plan. But the machines were provided by G4S. Oh my God! The they're equipment. evil. They're taking care of. But <laughs> this is a British company. Uh-uh. But they lost many contracts in Europe because of their complicity, because of activism or the BDS uh-uh. uh, over there. And they have announced that they want to get out of Israel. Oh, they have. They have announced. Okay. But I'm not sure whether they have completely got out of Israel. Yet. So at the moment, the BDS retain them on the list. Okay, until further notice. Until lah. they actually we 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 find out that they have completely divested from you know. Uh-uh. But they only announced only. Okay. Uh, so these are the most important targets, lah. Uh, of course, the other ones that are being included. And there's another one. Uh, Is Chevron? Oh, Chevron. Okay. Uh, Chevron is an uh, oil company. Yeah. American oil company because they help Israel to explore oil and uh, in the, in the Mediterranean. Okay. Uh, extraction of oil and generating billions for the Israeli government. Now that that area supposed to be Palestine, eh? basically, so yeah. they are giving money. Uh, they are helping. They're taking Israel. Palestinian oil and making money yeah. from it. Chevron. Yeah. Chevron is a company in okay. Malaysia. Do you what know is, what is what the company is, in Malaysia? No, I don't know. Uh, Caltex. Oh, okay. Uh, so Caltex. no Caltex. <laughs> Caltex is actually owned by Chevron. Okay. Uh, so Caltex uh, is another target that has been included. So we should not isi minyak dekat yeah. Caltex. Is that? <laughs> that is a, that's yeah, a, that's yeah, a, yeah, we should that's, boycott, that's Caltex, boycott Caltex, right? Caltex, yeah. Okay, isi minyak uh, ke Petronas je. <laughs> yeah, Petronas. <laughs> And Chevron. Yeah, yeah, not very really difficult kan? Banyak, uh-huh. banyak alternatives. So until Caltex and Chevron decide uh, announce, we do we are don't want to get involved with Israel anymore. Okay. Okay, and then uh, Siemens. Oh Siemens yeah, Siemens also they have got technological uh, what uh, uh, collaboration with the Israeli com- uh, government. Okay. Another company, um, uh, Agza Insurance. Uh, okay. So is, they they invest in Israeli banks. Okay. Yeah, major investors in Israeli banks, and we have been calling them. All companies should be divesting out. Of Israeli banks, uh-uh. but they decide to to continue. Apa, AXA investment uh, AXA, yeah. AXA. Yeah. oh AXA. Okay, I've I've never heard of that one. Uh-huh. Okay, so, so, so these are, are the major one lah. Uh, the other one, uh, we also because of American government support, uh-huh. buying support, yeah, uh, to Israel now, providing equipment for the Israeli army to be used to kill Palestinians. Yeah, we also call on Malaysians to buy American last. American last. By meaning, meaning, if you go out and you see, oh, buy like, American last. Like the, by, by, last time was buy British last. Uh-uh, ah yeah. Now buy American last. Okay. So if you find out this 
products are produced by American company, make it last choice. So lah. should we try our best to buy Malaysian products? Yeah. Uh, well, there are some companies, there are some products which you you cannot unavoidable lah. Unavoidable lah, kan? from other country. If you, I'm, I'm, we are not here to say buy Malaysia first. That's uh-uh. not our campaign. Uh-uh, yeah. Our campaign is focused on Palestine. Yeah. So we are not here to campaign for Malaysian, Malaysian products. Companies. Okay. Uh, that, that Focus you, on buying. That, that one will really to the other organisations. Okay, <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, but Caltex, I think, like certain items are quite easy. Caltex and Puma. There's other options. So. Yeah. Uh, sure. Unfortunately, I hope you can help us to make sure that all our youth are aware of this because I can see a lot of people are still wearing Puma t-shirts, yeah. very popular, and they don't seem to be aware. We have been doing this campaign for many, many years already actually, yeah. by got Puma, right? But yeah. still, uh, and our the, the the problem is our football association, uh, I think uh-huh. the Malaysian Football League, the the official ball is actually Puma. Oh wow! Uh, so we wrote to them. Uh-huh. And they don't want to meet us. We want to, we want to explain to them. Okay. So it's not easy, you know. Boycott is not easy because people have other priorities. Yeah. But now, hopefully, because of what's happening in Palestine now, the killing of almost ten thousand now, people become more sympathetic, lah, and then supportive of uh, our effort. Because this is the minimum that we can do. Uh-uh. Right. Uh, yeah. By right, we should be fighting along with the yeah. Palestinians uh-huh. against against the enemies, right, of invaders. But then uh, that's not possible now. So we, at least you can participate by being involved okay. in boycott efforts. So like, um, I just want to get back to what's currently happening in Malaysia on home soil. So we've been um, for the past I don't know two weeks or so. Schools have been uh, practice. I mean, showing solidarity to Palestine, can and they've been doing like demos demonstrations in schools. Teachers. Yeah. Some have been very controversial because they've been using toy guns and things like that. But generally, we're not here to talk about that. I just want to know, like, how should we educate our children and you know Malaysians in general on what's happening in Palestine? Okay, the most important thing is for people to understand the history of the uh, injustice that's okay. ongoing in Palestine. People ask me, you know, why is it ongoing? They get, they get tired of. Reading about it. Okay. Okay. If you want, if you want the whole thing to basically disappear from the news, it's very easy. Yeah. You ask the Palestinians to give up. Okay. That's the only thing. And this is what happened in the case of uh, New Zealand, Australia, America. Okay. The locals uh-huh. lost the battle. The locals mean Maori is in New Zealand. Uh uh-huh, yes. The country is. This is. A, That's a white country now, right? Yes, New Zealand. Betul. Uh, but the whites come from where? Even worse, even worse, Australia last two weeks ago, the indigenous bill too, they uh, lost. Uh, yeah. That's even more. So, the, all these were originally uh, the white people in yeah. Australia, New Zealand. They were they all came from Europe. Yeah. Right. So originally New Zealand, all f- very far from Europe. Yeah. So they were the Maoris were the one. The yes. People, but now the country is basically uh, no longer. It's basically a white it's country. Basically, a white country, Australia. Yes. Why? Because they lost the battle. Yes. So if you, it's no more. You don't hear a story of any struggle now in New Zealand yeah. or Australia or even America, United States, because yeah. the original people of the United States were the, they were Indians, right? Yeah, the, the Native Americans. The Native Americans. But now, it's actually American. The president yeah. is uh, all white. Uh, all white. Uh, Except for Barack Obama, <laughs> okay. But. So, so if you do you want if you want Palestine, uh, no more problem, no more news about the the conflicts in the Europe, end la, uh, then, the cleanse. Then, then that's it. Allow the ethnic cleansing to continue. Yeah. And to get all the Palestinians out, this is what the agenda of the Zionists to get yeah. the Palestinians out completely and they control the country completely. Yeah. But you have to give credit to the Palestinians; they are not so easy. Yes. Uh, to get it off, they fight more than seventy five years. They they continue to fight and they don't they don't care if they are going to die and yeah. and they are very sophisticated in in other words right proven recently right even though they they are not getting support from the international community they can still fight yeah and so the reason why it's ongoing <laughs> is because they are people who will not give up for battle for they are battle for justice yes okay you cannot come to our country and take our country just like that so for us Muslims we should be Admiring them, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, because they are also protecting Masjid Aqsa, which yes. is actually belongs to the whole Muslim world. Okay, so you have to understand the history. This is a battle against colonial 
colon, colonizers. Yeah. There's another term for it called settler colonialism. Okay. Settler, why? Because these people come, they don't only want to colonize, they want to get rid of the, the original people. people. Uh-huh. That is worse, right? So you don't come over there and the colonize control, but you want to get rid of all the yeah. uh, the original people there, the asal, penduduk yeah. asal, the Palestinian. Yeah. Yeah. That's settler colonialism. So if you understand that, then you will then appreciate that what is happening over there is not blind violence by the Palestinian. Okay. These are fight against colonial invaders. Yeah. This is these are freedom fighters. Yes. Hamas is actually freedom fighters. Yes. Okay, so if you understand that, then then your take on what's happening in the school, if if you see some people uh-uh. uh uh have using toy guns, uh-uh. then it is freedom fighters. Okay. In Malaysia, I was informed during our apa ni um, Hari Merdeka, uh-uh. sometimes people also use guns, prop, eh, to uh-uh. show we, our fight against the Japanese invaders, the British, whatever, right? Nobody cares anything, right? Yes, it's, it's not an issue. If you see somebody doing with the guns, our Tuku Pahlawan is uh-uh. people with guns, soldiers with guns. Yeah. You, you bring you bring school kids to look at the Tuku Pahlawan. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong about that. Yes, because you understand it was a fight against. You understand the context and the history. The context is three. Yes. The problem is that in Malaysia people don't understand the context. That's why they get scared. They think mm. it's violence. Gun violence. Uh, violence, etc. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So that is the problem. Okay. So, all right, lah. If you if you don't if you are so sensitive about it, <laughs> it's okay. But uh, I su- support the KPM. Uh-huh. So education's effort to educate people yeah. of the history. Yeah. Uh, that one should continue. Okay. So we we start a uh, petition. A memo. Should should BDS be educated in schools as well? That's what uh, I have. You're I, planning of to. Course, we we already spoke to uh, to uh, the Minister of Education. Okay. And and we are going to. They agree in principle that there should be education program. Okay. Uh, expose the students to the history of Palestine struggle and but it's it's not easy because there are a lot of red tapes and no no they, they are willing to help us on okay. that one the point is there are more than 10,000 schools I don't know yeah, 10,000 yeah. schools yeah. so the resources we want to educate people yeah. you, to, you go to you know how it's going to cost a lot of money eh? yeah. so that is a, a, the problem but we uh, we are uh, the ministry is very res- uh, responsive Okay. Uh, and inshallah we will start Uh, educating, coming up with a program to teach school children okay, about but, this. But Prof, what's your comments on these some politicians who are against like educating? Okay, the issue? Num- there are two, two issues I would say. Number one is they don't understand. Okay. But I think those who you, that's that is my like, baik lah. Okay. They don't understand the history. Okay. Because even Malays or Muslim don't understand also. But uh, some Malays are also uh, against the Palestinian cause. Okay. Some Malays, eh, by the minority, Alhamdulillah. Uh-uh. Lah. Why you ask them? Then you find out they don't really understand, understand the, history. the history. Okay. Uh, once you understand the history, then then you appreciate uh-uh. the fight uh, for freedom, eh? uh, and that the, over there are freedom fighters. Now, among the those who are aware, uh, the politician, uh-huh. the problem is that their supporters are not aware. Okay. So they are politician number one, educator number two. Yeah. So to educate. To educate their supporters may, will take time, uh-huh. and while they are trying to educate, they may lose support. Yes. So politicians are like that. Yeah. Huh? Many issues. Yeah. They look at what are the sentiments. What benefits them? What benefits? They educating people is secondary. Okay. Uh, the best example example is uh, subsidies. Yeah. Okay. Uh, government borrow almost 1.5 trillion. Uh huh. Government debt. Debt we are paying almost. 50 billion in interest, interest alone. Eh? Mm-hmm. Why do politicians continue to do that, even though they know it's actually bad uh-huh. in the long run? Because we are going to have Be to find more money to pay in, to pay yeah. the loan plus interest. Yeah. But they continue with the subsidies all this while. Yeah. Successive governments, because it's a popular thing to do. Yeah. Educate them. They they don't want the risk of being unpopular. Yeah. So they continue with this wrong policy for mm-hmm. so many years. Similarly, in this case. Many politicians know, right? Uh, that is actually what the Palestinian cause is actually uh, the right cause. Uh, for the Muslim uh, majority politicians, so it's easier lah because mm-hmm. many Muslims are supportive. 
for the non-Muslims, many non-Muslims don't understand the history. They don't understand the history, and they get worried also because all these are associated with Islam. Yeah. So they think that this Islamic uh, spirit and fervor will spill to become uh, to help uh, set up another Taliban state in this country. Mm-hmm. They, that's what they think. They, mm-hmm. they think that Hamas is like Taliban. That's what they think. Okay. And then later on, if supporters of uh, Hamas, uh, supporters of Taliban. Then Malaysia will become a Taliban state, so they get worried about that. Okay. So, so most of them are, have got this impression. So the politicians get worried. Their supporters from, come from this, this base, eh? uh-uh. These people who are got this kind of thinking. So instead of trying to educate them, they will decide the easier way. The easier way, safer way, is to is to go along. Uh-uh. To go along so that the support doesn't doesn't get diminished. Uh, that is the that is the reason why some of these politicians, I I think them about twelve of them from yeah. the PKR, decided uh, to voice to, out their voice out against the KPM program. Yeah. Well, what's wrong with the KPM program? It's just educating people. Okay. But that's the popular thing to do among their voters. Okay, Prof Nazri, Nazri, this is the last question before we end. This has been an amazing conversation and. Okay, this is my last question. Do you think the protests and demonstrations happening in Malaysia, in Malaysia, have have it? Does it show actual support, or is it? Like, we kita tengok, we see on social media, on TV, like the ones in UK, the ones in US, the ones in the ones in Turkey. It's massive, like insanely massive, and they are like from Western countries. Kalau dekat Malaysia, we don't see it that much. Like we haven't been seeing it that much. Which I'm sendu je. So like, what's your take on why Malaysians, despite supporting and being very, 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 you know, within us, it's not physically I, I, present. I think uh, most Malaysians are supportive of the Palestinian cause. Okay. Why do the Why don't they turn up in in mass, right? yeah. in droves at the yeah. demonstrations? Yes. I think it's because they don't sense the urgency. Okay. Because the Malaysian government has already announced that the prime minister has gone on television saying that we are with the Palestinians, so they don't sense the urgency. Okay. Whereas in some other countries, the Western countries, the British government, for example, is pro yeah. Israel. Yeah. So the the Palestinian supporters over there in UK found, uh, felt that they have to do something about to it to make a change, uh, Because man, their money is being used to to fund to, to fund the killings of Palestinians, yeah. so they get very upset. So I think that's the reason why you have more than hundred thousand people demonstrating in London because they they the what their money is being used yeah uh, to fund the killings compared to us in our case we we don't have any relation with Israel so our prime minister our government is actually pro Palestine yeah so I think that's the reason why the demonstration is not on the same but scale. But should people be going down to show their support? Uh, They should. They should okay. at least at least to show to the world yeah. that we are very passionate about this. They should. But as I said, I think they don't find the urgency because I think they saw the, the Malaysian government and the prime minister. And we all are on the same page, basically. So yeah. it makes it easier. Yeah. Like, yep. So the it's not so so challenging for them. Okay. They say that it's it's not it's not so important because the government is also already saying that they are pro Palestine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Prof. No problem. At Thank all. you for being Thank on the Palestinian you. Diaries. Thank, Thank you for having me. Hopefully, this is not your last. Hopefully, you come again and join us. Inshallah, right. no problem at all. Okay. So, guys, remember the major companies that we should be boycotting: um, Puma, Caterpillar, Chev- uh, Cal- Caltex, Petrol, and those are just among the things. Lah. So, um, make sure you guys check out BDS Malaysia. Thank you so much, Prof Nazari. And let's make the difference, even with the smallest, s- smallest thing like going to the groceries. Okay, thank you so much, and thank you for joining. And see you in the next episode. <laughs>